I'm joined by the Commissioner for Budgets and Economic Planning in Zamfara State, Abdul Malik Abubakar Gajam, for discussion on the first 100 days in the office of Governor Dawda Lawal. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Gajam. Thank you. Now, you're said to be uh, the youngest commissioner in Zamfara State. How are you coping with politics and governance? Uh, well, let me first of all thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me the opportunity to be here and also to thank you for having me. Well, politics and governance, uh, especially in Zamfara State, I think are two different things because the political game in Nigeria, especially in states like Zamfara, is completely different. It is chaotic and then lack of actual civilized processes followed. But in governance in Zamfara State, I think um, this is the first time as a young person I am proud of my state. A state that generally is known in the indices of poor people, the challenges of insecurity, the display of ignorance by leadership in the past, but people voiced out their anger and they changed. They changed for good. So governance, I believe we are starting to see the light out of the tunnel in Zamfara State because when we talk about governance, we are talking about following the due process. When we talk about governance, we talk about obeying law and order. When we talk about governance, we talk about leadership that understands the needs of its people and the cries out of its people and a government that creates an enabling environment for everyone to thrive and then reduce equality between uh, the, the poor people and the rich people and a government that understands it is important to empower the younger generation with education, a government that understands enhancing the healthcare delivery system, a government that understands there is no society without security. So politics is behind us. The people of Zamfara State have uh, asked for change and they put their hands and cast it for change. And then change has come to Zamfara State. So talk to us about the first 100 days in office of Governor Dada Lawal as the fifth democratically elected governor of Zamfara State. So as we all know people from Zamfara State and Nigeria at large, uh, the leadership in Zamfara State in the past was driven or centric on uh, religious bigotry and um, a willful display of ignorance and lack of processes. But now, Dr. Dauda Lawan, as the governor, in his first 100 days, he triggered a strategic, robust recovery plan. What do I mean by that? Well, a plan that makes sure uh, the healthcare system is enhanced, the education system is enhanced, the infrastructural development is enhanced of the state and the security of the state. So when we talk about the social programs, which include the education sector and then the healthcare sector on education, before Dr. Dawda Lawan, for three, for three years, the past administration did not pay for WAEC tuition for our younger, younger people from the secondary school to write their WAEC exams and go to the university for three years. That means 70,000 young people in Zamfara State have been left behind for three years without enrollment. Every single person that attended public school and finished his SS3 to go to university has been there for three years. When he came in, he understood the importance of education and there is no society that can stand with, on its toes without educating its younger generation. So he paid that debt of over billions of naira that is on education. And then secondly, he moved on to infrastructural development in the educational sector. He made sure he bring the partners and then the development funds at UBEC and TETFON and elsewhere to bring them to enhance the serenity and the environment of our schools to build up primary schools. And that program is ongoing now. And when we talk about healthcare, this is something that he takes very seriously. We have started engaging the development partners in building and rehabilitating our primary healthcare delivery uh, systems. And we have started bringing 
professionals to train our younger people that finishes their health technology. We have a health technology school and school of nursing in the first state. So he has started energizing and putting in effort to making sure those younger people are enrolled. And as we speak now, the last executive council meeting we had, he made sure, uh, he, he, he asked us, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, and then Ministry of Budget and Planning to design a system on how to analyze and process the system to look at the feasibility of more employment in the sector and then the sector, the places where we need to enroll more people. And then when right. we talk about education, uh, when we talk about education, we talk about healthcare, that is a social program. Mr. And then the social program of palliative that the federal government is bringing now, before the Mr. federal Gajam. government uh, let's decided take, uh, to give palliative. One after the other. Let's take these issues one, of the, well, one after the other. Let's start with security, which is probably the biggest challenge facing the state. What is the situation now compared to when Governor Lawal assumed office on May 29? All right. Dr. Dawood Alam, when he came, all the security agencies, the military, the police were complaining about the incentives their people get. Even the maintenance of their vehicles have been ignored by the state government. So he gave them all that. He made sure they have gotten all that they need in order to go and mobilize their people and make sure they fish out these criminals that are in our rural villages. And then the vulnerability of the road from Funtua to Zafara State to Rusape, there is always kidnapping taking place. But he made sure he mobilized this past week. He mobilized the military, he mobilized the police with uh, uh, vehicles, bulletproof vehicles, to, be super, to go and supervise those roads in order to protect the lives and properties of the people. And then secondly, he signed a bill, trust fund bill, police trust fund bill, in order to make sure all the equipment needed by the police or any paramilitary to pursue the, the agenda of securing the federal state is met. That is the second thing in this 100 days that he has done. And thirdly, he had engaged all the stakeholders and then asked them to recruit 300 youth, JTF, the federal state JTF, from across each local government, 300, 100 youths, in order to fight these bandits, in order to have a, uh, the number of manpower to fight this banditry that is going in the first state. So if you say that's the situation, why do you think our major stakeholders in that state are asking that government declares uh, a state of emergency in the states because of the, what's they perceive as paralyzing vacuum uh, of the highest level of leadership in that state? Well, first of all, before asking to, uh, of any person asking the government to declare a state of emergency, for example, said we have to understand. Well, insecurity crisis is everywhere in the world, and it keeps on happening. Why does it happen in Zamfara State? That is what we have campaigned for because of lack of the ignorance of the government to empower the youth, to make sure people have better orientation through the education system, to cater for people, to fight for corruption and to make sure there is productivity, especially in the agricultural sector. We have to make sure our people can go to farmland and produce. And that is the strategy that we are putting in place in order to fight this banditry that is happening. And when you look at it, we have been having success stories within the past uh, uh, two months of this new administration of Dr. Daoud Alawan. There have been killings of bandits in Bukwim local government. There have been dismantling of their camps and their machineries in Shinkafi local government. A lot of people are, are, are giving credit to this administration. The, uh, the, the main problem we are having is the problem of kidnapping through the Funtua to Safa Road. And then His Excellency Dr. David Lawan mobilized the security forces to patrol in order to secure that route uh, and then protect our people from kidnapping. When we look at the past administration, it used to be a government in Zamfara State that takes advantage of this insecurity to extort and misappropriate funds. When we have leadership that communicates with these bandits on daily basis, when we have leadership 
that gives asylum, a place to hide bandits in the name of having a truce with the bandits. That is something that we are not agreeing with as in this new administration, and that is something that we are even investigating because we realize these bandits, they can be dismantled because it is man-made. These people live in the rural areas and then try to attack people that are powerless without weapons. In other, instead of the government, the past government, to, uh, to fight them back, they brought them in in order to get resources through the processes. We do not understand that, but it's 100 days and we are working towards making Zamfara State a better place. When you ask people around Zamfara State, I guarantee you and I believe they have seen the change through the stoppage of kidnapping in these roads, through the signing of the uh, police trust fund bill, through recruitment of youth to be trained by the military and the uh, uh, DSS in order to go and fight this banditry. So there is no, there is no reason to think that uh, we are not on top of the matter. We are on top of the issue, and the governor states to the people of Nigeria that we are not going to negotiate with bandits. That is right. something uh, we are Mr. not Gajam, here to do. Uh, contradictory reports, I must say, because while you talk about improvement, others are saying it's getting worse, especially in areas like uh, Bungudu local government, where uh, uh, bandits attacked a division of police station, killed a policeman. Uh, bandits also attacked Kwata Kashi local government, or rather village, killing scores of people. And earlier, some other citizens were talking about uh, killings in Boko village in Zumi local government area. Several other attacks in Mada, Wonako in Guzo local government, and daily attacks in uh, Bukuyu Mananka local government. But how is the administration striving to secure highways and villages, uh, especially highways, uh, bedeviled by banditry and kidnapping? I'm glad you made mention of this local government in Bungutu local government and MADA is a ward in Guso local government. Due to the pursuit of this administration and killing of these bandits from their camps, all this local government you have mentioned, they are the, they are the access road and the routes of those bandits because they do not have a stable place now in Zamfarasid. So they keep on running and coming back. In Mada and Guso and this uh, Fe road that we are talking of, it's a passage road for them. So they, can, they would go and do their territory and then go back to their places. So the victims of there are getting that because this banditry has been there for over 10 years. We are here on 100 days. In Bukum local government, we have done uh, the due diligence. We have killed almost 100 bandits from that and we have dismantled their camps. When you talk about Shinkafi local government, these are places where nobody could enter those places. These are places where they had huge camps and huge machineries in fighting of military and kidnapping people and taking goods and services there. So now we have dismantled that. We are in the process because now a, a, a criminal without a home is a criminal running about the street. So we are going, we are getting there. We are getting there through this process of recruitment of these young people to fight the banditry through mobilizing the military and the police by giving them the necessary equipment and incentives and support by the state government. We are getting there. It's just 100 days. It's just right. 100 days. So we are getting there. We have managed to dismantle some of their camps and we are still fighting them and we are not negotiating with them. This is something that everyone in Zamfara State agrees with, everyone in Zamfara State understands because for over 10 years they have been having truce and having an agreement with these bandits. But all that has done to Zamfara State is empower these bandits to acquire more weapons, to acquire more territories. But now we have a government that says, no, we do not negotiate with terrorists. We are solemnly right, so behind the good people of Zamfara State and we are determined to finish all of this. So in this, our 100 days, these are the three major steps that we have taken. And I guarantee you, next time I come back here, you will hear more success story, not even from me, but from the people of Zamfara State and from the people of Nigeria at large. And moving on,
to the 100 days, we have talked about security, we have talked about education, we have talked about healthcare. Now let's talk about restructuring. The reason why people of Zamfara State voted Dr. Dauda Lawan as their governor is because they were tired of the madness called leadership in Zamfara State. When he came in, he restructured the MDEs. Why? Because we had a, an overbloated MDEs from 28 ministries to now 16 ministries. That shows you Dr. Dauda Lawan is ready to deliver service to the people. He does not care right. about the politics of it. All he cares about is to help his people. And from 12, uh, 48 permanent secretaries to 23, and from right. 35 Sakajam, directorates, uh, like I said directorates earlier, I like to one directorate. One after the other. I would like us to take these issues one after the other. And let's get back to education. You said you were talking about education. We're not talking about education. Let's get back to education. Uh, Zampara is also one of the educationally disadvantaged states in Nigeria. A report has it that uh, Governor Dadalawal was said to have solicited the help of TED Fund to reposition the education sector. What stage is that proposal? And how does this help in reducing the over 850,000 children out of school? Well, so this is all, it, could, it takes us back to restructuring. Without proper restructuring, any serious government that comes into place, there is need for feasibility. All these statistics are out there. Now, what this government is doing, apart from coming to UBEC and sourcing for funding to build more classes, that would accommodate this 100,000 plus younger people, uh, 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 boys and girls that are out of schools to accommodate them in those schools. There, he has also showed the enthusiasm and the determination that this government is going to focus on education. We cannot allow our younger generation to be left behind in Nigeria, not even just in Nigeria, we want in the future our younger people to compete in the world on mathematics, on English. It starts with school infrastructure. That is the infrastructure he is focusing on. And then the feasibility on the manpower that is needed in order to enhance those studies. And then the curriculum that to teach our students. So these are the things we are focusing on. We have paid for the WAEC. This administration paid for a WAEC debt of over a billion, a NACO debt of over a billion. Uh, when, when, when last two, three weeks, when our young people uh, went to school to write their NACO exams, it was like Christmas. It was like Eid because for three, four years, they have not experienced that. All their, uh, their brothers and sisters for three years have been at home without having the opportunity to write those exams. So when you right. build classes, when you enhance the delivery system of uh, curriculum, when you enhance the libraries, when you enhance the laboratories, and then when you enhance the transportation and the feeding of these young people, in, and in a very comprehensive and coordinated uh, manner, uh, then we will have time. an education system that functions in the state. Sadly, we're out of time. But in 30 seconds, uh, 100 days and beyond for the administration, what should people of the state be expecting from the administration? In 30 well, seconds. Like the Uber renewal. Okay. The Uber renewal that is taking place in Zamfara State, the capital of Zamfara State, Gusau, for the past 20 years, it has been dealt with like some mere local government. It is now in this 100 days, there is 3 kilometer, a 3.5 kilometer township road, restructuring of all the roundabouts in the state capital, and then roads that passes through the hospitals, through the Amir's Palace, through the Tankian Rua Road. This is ongoing. And in 20 days that they have started their work, if you have seen the improvement, even two days ago, His Excellency was going around the state capital to check those Uber renewal projects that are ongoing. The people of the state were so excited and happy because it's like a new era 
As young people, we have been hearing about there would be a light at the end of the tunnel. I think we are witnessing that in this hundred days. So on Uber renewal, on infrastructure, he has touched that. On education, he has made improvement. On healthcare, he has made improvement. And on the restructuring, because without a formidable force and determined governance structure, there is little a government can achieve. So he is bringing sanity with the bills that he has signed, executive order of anti-corruption tribunal. You will look at those things right. and you would Thank see you so an much, improvement coming to the first state within this 100 days. Sadly, we're out of time. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with the Commissioner for Budget and Economic Planning in Zamfara State, Abdul Malik Abubakar Gajam. Thank you for uh, bringing us up to speed with Governor Dada Lawaz, 100 days in office. And we look forward to more success story. Thank you so much.